Hey, what's up? Welcome back to my channel. My name is Gabby and today I'm going to be telling you my top 10 favorite books of 2022 so far. This is a video that I love to do every year about halfway through the year. I really did intend to do this video in July, but the time just got away from me and so we're doing it in August. But yeah, these are just going to be, you know, my top 10 favorite books that I've read so far this year. I feel like I've had a really incredible reading year so far and I have so many favorites that I've accumulated throughout the year and I'm super excited to tell you all about them. But before we do jump into today's video, I wanted to say a huge thank you to the sponsor of today's video, which is June's Journey. June's Journey is a perfect mobile game for all of you mystery and thriller lovers out there. June's Journey is a free to download mobile game where you have to find all these different hidden objects and all these different beautiful scenes and beautiful rooms. It is available to download on iOS and Android devices as well as on PC through Facebook games. I really enjoy playing this game like right before I go to bed and I love just like getting all cozy in bed and playing this cute little mystery game. I love that it makes you feel like you're a detective trying to figure out a story and it has all the glamour of the 1920s. I also like that each scene takes you further into the story and we're just following this protagonist named June who is on a quest to solve the murder of her sister and uncover a bunch of other family secrets along the way. It's really fun playing this game though, you know, because it feels like you're partaking in a mystery novel or something. So I do feel like if you enjoy mysteries, you would really like this game because it's really fun, really interactive, and it's also just really beautiful and so well made. Like all the colors look really nice. The music just makes it so much fun. There's cool sound effects. Like it's just a really immersive, awesome game and it's free to download. So like, why not? Right? So you can download June's Journey for free today by clicking the link down below in my description. And thank you so much once again to June's Journey for sponsoring today's video. And now let's get into the best books of the year so far. So I did have a few books that I would consider to be honorable mentions that didn't quite make it into like my top 10 favorites of the year, but they're still really good books that I want to shout out. And some of those include include Part of Your World by Abby Jimenez. This is one of my favorite romances that I've read this year. Crying in H Mart is one of my favorite nonfiction memoir books that I've read this year. I also have Cursed Bunny as an honorable mention because this is one of my favorite short story collections that I've ever read. And then also Good Rich People was like a fun thriller time, but didn't make it into my top 10 faves. I would also add in here XOXO is one of my favorite young adult contemporary romances that I've read in a really long time. And then also Comfort Me with Apple is one of my favorite short stories that I've read this year. <laughs> All right, so now to get into these top 10 books, we're gonna kick off this list with The Shuddering by Anya Alborn. And this is one that I read during Winterween in January this year. And I had no idea when I read this that I would love this book as much as I did because this book is kind of like a monster horror novel. And most of the monster horror that I've read so far in my life has been horror that's pretty, you know, it's pretty ambiguous. You know, it's like one of those things where we never really see the monster. Monster. It's like we know the monster's there, but we never get like in contact with the monster But this book is straight up like monster horror Like the monster is just murdering bitches left and right in this book And we're following this group of friends in this book who's going on a ski resort trip with all of their friends up to their family cabin And then while they're going up there There's been like local things happening in the town of like these people that are getting slaughtered by a monster But nobody can see it and it's like what and this book is literally written like a horror movie I don't know how to explain this to you other than you know one chapter we're following the group of friends and they're going up there and it's creepy vibes but then the next chapter we get the point of view of like some random stranger who's like going up to the mountain and then they see the monster and they get brutally murdered and you know it's just like it's it's written like a horror movie the way like a horror movie will cut back to like the main group and then it'll cut to some random stranger getting killed by the, like whatever the monster is it was so much fun to read this book because it read so much like a horror movie and i grew to care about these characters character so much. Like, not gonna lie, at the beginning I was like, okay, I don't care about anyone. I don't care what happens to them. But then over time, I started to really grow a fondness for these characters and I cared about their fate. And the ending of this book was just so action-packed. It was so freaking good and I was like shaking by the end because I just had so much adrenaline and it was such a good time. It was such a good horror book. Another one of my favorites this year has got to be Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. This is a thriller that, you know, Alice Feeney has wrote a number of thrillers. I've actually read every book she's ever written so far 
far. And this one might be my favorite from her so far. Like it's definitely a tie between this one and Rock, Paper, Scissors. But this one just had the best vibes out of any Alice Feeney book that I've ever read because, you know, we're taking place on this little island. It's the night of October 30th going into Halloween morning. And we're following this woman named Daisy, which also Daisy Darker is the coolest name I've ever heard in my freaking life. I'm obsessed. I love it so much. And so she's going to, you know, be reunited with her family. They're going to be celebrating her grandma's 80th birthday. But then shortly after arriving there, a really bad storm starts to happen and they are cut off from the rest of the world for eight hours. And as soon as it hits midnight, the grandma is found dead and like murdered. And then slowly one by one, every hour of the night, another family member is getting killed off and they're trying to figure out who could be doing this, who could be responsible. This book is a wild ride, you know? It's definitely like a shout out to Agatha Christie because it definitely has those vibes. But I feel like this book was such a fresh and like new take on this kind of story. And I was so shocked by the ending of this book. Like I did not see it coming at all. And I just had so much fun with it. And I feel like for atmosphere, this has got to be one of the most atmospheric books that I've read this year. Like I loved the island stormy Halloween vibes. I think this would be the perfect book to read for Halloween. Like it's seriously so good. Another one of my favorite romance so far this year is Lease on Love. This is one that I'm currently lending to my mom to read, so I do have a physical copy of this one, but oh my god, I adore this book so much. And in this book, we're following this protagonist named Sadie who, you know, right at the start of this book, she loses her job and she goes on this app that she thinks is a dating app, but it's actually a roommate's app. And she pairs with this guy named Jack and it's really cute because on their first interaction, he's like asking her all of these like really serious questions and like taking notes. And she's like, why are you being so creepy and like taking notes on me? And because she he thinks that they're like on a date and he's like what a date like where you know he's like you apply for like a roommate application and she's like what the fuck and so it's about how she becomes roommates with this guy named Jack and they're living in Brooklyn New York and if you know anything about me you know that I'm obsessed with New York like any book that takes place in New York I want to read it you know sign me up so I really loved that about this book I love that Sadie is like she was a really relatable character for me you know because she's like starting her own business and like doing her own thing and having financial freedom and then also this romance that she starts having with Jack in this book was so freaking precious. I love Jack and I just adore him so much and he's actually going through a lot of things in this book and it's taking a lot for him to you know get out of his shell and like open up to people and I just adored him so much. I love how she would call him like Jack in the Box and like Jack O'Lantern like all her cute little nicknames for him and like they were just so cute. They were one of my favorite couples that I've read about this year and I just adored this book so freaking much. Another one of my favorite favorite romances of this year has got to be The Romantic Agenda by Claire Can, and this is mostly because of how much I personally related to this book because if you didn't know this book follows the character Joy who is 30 flirty and asexual and if you didn't know I do also identify as asexual and so it was so wild for me to read about asexual representation in a romance novel like literally unheard of I've never read anything like that before this book and so this book just touched me in ways that I can't really put into words but also the romance in this book was also just really well done um Joy has this friendship with this guy named Malcolm in this book but then Malcolm likes this girl Summer and then Summer has this ex named Fox and then Fox is into Joy and they're all gonna be going on this trip together and so there's like kind of fun like summer vacation kind of vibes in this one as well which I really liked but like the friendship between Joy and Malcolm just like hurt my heart so much it just really like reminded me of friendships that I've had in my own life and it just really got to me like the ending of this book really made me cry and this book was just good it was so good it was beautiful I think whether you're asexual or not I do think you could find enjoyment in this and I think it's a really good well-written romance and it just made my heart so happy another book that surprised the hell out of me that ended up being a favorite of this year is Wild. And this book is surprising to me because, you know, not only do I, I don't read a whole lot of nonfiction, you know, like nonfiction isn't my go-to jam, but I actually ended up reading this book because I did a video earlier this year called like reading books that are recommended for Capricorns. And apparently a lot of Capricorns are very connected with nature and so this book got highly recommended for, you know, the earth signs. And I was not expecting
expecting to love this book as much as I did. Like this book is one of those books that I feel like maybe I'm exaggerating a little bit, but I kind of feel like it changed my life a little bit, okay? This book just inspired me so much, you know? Like it really made me want to get back in nature. Like I literally bought hiking boots after reading this book just because I was so inspired and I like made it my goal to go on a lot of hikes. Have I done that? No, but it really inspired me. And this is a nonfiction true story about this woman who, you know, her mom passes away and she's just feeling very lost in her life and so she makes it a goal for herself to hike the Pacific Crest Trail which is actually from California all the way up to Washington and maybe that's another reason why I connected with it as much as I did because you know I'm originally from California and now I'm living in Washington so this coast of the United States is very familiar to me and feels like home to me and I just love this so much like it was just genuinely so inspiring I want to get a quote from this book like tattooed on my body because of how much I love it and it was just really good you know really life-changing shit I love this book. Most recently added to this list is Upgrade by Blake Crouch. I do think this is one of my favorite books of the year. This is a sci-fi thriller from the legendary author who brought us Recursion and Dark Matter, aka one of my favorite books of all time. And so I was highly, highly anticipating this book and luckily it lived up to that hype for me. I love this book so much. Basically, we're just following this man named Logan Ramsey and he works in like genetic editing. He works as like a GPA, which stands for Genetic Protection Agency agent or something like that and he basically gets put in a situation where he gets set up kind of in this situation and he gets pelted with some kind of thing that goes into his body and like stings him and then he finds out that basically his genetics and his DNA just got hacked and this book was so fascinating okay like I'm not a major major sci-fi person but maybe I should be because I've noticed that a lot of my favorite books of the year tend to be sci-fi but like some of it did go a little bit over my head like I'm not gonna lie I'm not a scientist I'm not that great with science but I'm so fascinated by it and the freaking thrills and the plot twists in this book like this book was so action-packed it was so interesting I loved all the conversation you know around like different psychology th related things and like how the human brain works I don't know I just think Blake Crouch is such a great writer like he's one of those sci-fi writers that I will absolutely pick up everything that he writes because I just love the way he writes like he writes really interesting sci-fi but then he also writes really well fleshed out characters and just has beautiful writing in general like some of the quotes in this book I was like god damn that is stunning so yeah I love this book so much it's definitely one of my favorites of the year and it's one that I'm going to be thinking about for so long. Another one of my top favorite thriller books that I've read this year is So Happy For You by Celia Lasky. This is one that I hesitate to like recommend to a wide audience of people, you know, because I do feel like most people will probably not like this book. <laughs> But for me personally, I liked this book so much because I related so much to this main character. Like Robin is me, basically, if I was more comfortable with confrontation, like that's all I'll say. But this book is really fascinating because we're following this main protagonist named Robin and her best friend from high school, Ellie, is getting married. And so Ellie asks her to be her maid of honor. But Robin has a lot of different beliefs on like weddings and she thinks that weddings are, you know, kind of ridiculous and over the top. And it's interesting because they were really close friends in high school but now as adults they're just not as close as they used to be and I think this book you know it's definitely a slow burn you know I think calling it a thriller is a bit of a stretch because nothing really thrilling happens until like very close to the ending of this book but this is also just a really great book about you know female friendships and how toxic they can be there's also just a lot of really great social commentary on different things like feminism and like you know the wedding industry and how that looks and how it can be so toxic and I don't know I just personally love this one so much. I had so much fun with this book. I do think it's kind of a slow burn, but I loved the character development and I loved getting into Robin's head. I also thought the end of this book just got so unhinged and just chaotic and I loved it. I loved it. It's kind of ridiculous, but I loved it. All right, getting into my final top three. This is intense. I think Battle Royale has got to be in like my top three favorite books of this year, which is so wild because, you know, going into this book, I have literally had no expectations going into this. I was pretty positive that I wasn't gonna like this just because Battle Royale has been compared to a lot of things you know like the Hunger Games or like things like that that I just haven't really enjoyed before in the past but this story is a Japanese thriller about this you know there's this thing in Japan that they have in this world where they take these like 40 students they take them to this island they drop them there and they give them weapons and they say hey you all have to kill each other until there's only one of you left standing and also if you don't 
kill each other. We're just gonna kill you. So you got to kill each other and this book was fascinating Okay, I know this book is like over 600 pages It was quite a journey to read this But also I had some of the most fun that I've had this year reading this book Like it was so action-packed so intense not a dull moment in this book Okay, and I love that this is like the OG, you know because this book came out in like the early 2000s or the late 90s And this was like the thing that inspired so many other stories that I love I'm sure and it was just genuinely so so good like I got so attached to the characters like at the end I was getting emotional and I thought the ending was so surprising like I thought for sure that this was gonna have like the most basic generic ending and just kind of be like well that's it but like no the ending was so good so interesting so clever I just really love these characters I love that you think that you know where the story is going but it still t surprises you throughout the entire book I thought and yeah it's one of my favorites of the year like I cannot believe Battle Royale was so good all right next up is probably my my favorite romance book that I've read so far this year and that is Book Lovers by Emily Henry and this book is one that I think I love it so much because I feel like I personally relate a lot to Nora's character in this book and in this story we're following this character named Nora she works as a literary agent in the book world and her sister is super pregnant with her third child and she asks Nora if she would want to take this trip with her to this little town called Sunshine Falls because she wants Wants to have some like bonding and sister time before this third baby comes and then of course while they're there on this trip to Sunshine Falls she notices that her co-worker Charlie who is a book editor is also in Sunshine Falls and then it becomes this like kind of like hate to love you know romance between them and like oh my god the freaking banter between these two was so god tier like I was giddy I was smiling I was laughing it was just so freaking cute like it was so cute I also just loved Nora as a protagonist because I love how protective she was of her little sister because same and then I also loved how she was such a like career person and she was very much like a city person you know like I love how much she talks about how much she loves New York City and how much she hates small towns because I felt that in my freaking soul and Nora was just like I don't know she was incredibly relatable for me I just love how like independent she is and how unwilling she is to give up her independence and I don't know like they call her character the ice queen or whatever they make a lot of comments like that but I personally thought thought she was so relatable and I loved that and their banter was seriously so cute like this was some of my favorite romance scenes that I've read all year long it was just absolutely adorable like I genuinely kind of want to reread this before the end of the year like that's how much I loved it and then the last book that I have on this list which you might say is my favorite book that I've read so far in the year of 2022 is notes on an execution it's considered a thriller I think but it's definitely like a slow burn almost like literary fiction style of writing in this story we're following this serial killer named Ansel who is currently on death row and he's like waiting to be executed basically but it's interesting because we get Ansel's point of view in the present day when he's literally sitting on death row waiting to be executed but then in flashbacks we get to learn about his story through the different women that were in his life so like we kind of get the point of view of his mother from when he was a child we, we get the point of view of this random girl that he knew when he was in the foster care system and then we get the point of view of the sister of the woman that he ends up with and it's just really interesting to see the perspectives of these women who were just you know women in his lives and getting to hear about his story and I feel like this book is one of the most thought-provoking books that I've read all year and I think this book definitely starts a lot of conversations you know and I think that's something that I always love when I read books you know I love books that make you think for so long after you finish them you know and I love books that make you question things like is the death penalty a good thing or like what does it do for the world or the fact that like the just the discussion in in general in this book about how we as a society really glamorize serial killers and we don't talk enough about the victims and what their lives could have been like. It's really fascinating too, you know, because this guy, Ansel, he's really obsessed with this idea of like the multiverse and like different versions of himself that could have existed out there. And I don't know, just the whole conversation in this book, period, is so fascinating. Like I could literally talk about this book for hours and I feel like that's how I know it's one of my top favorites of the year because it left such an 
impression on me. And the ending literally had me shook. I was like crying. It was beautifully told at the end. Like I just couldn't believe how stunning this story was. Wild. It's just wild. It's so good. Like I wouldn't go into this thinking that you're going to read a thriller. I would go into this thinking that you're going to read about a serial killer and get into the mind of a serial killer. And then I think you would enjoy it a lot more. But yeah, I think this has got to be like one of my favorite books that I've read this year. It just left such an impression on me and I can't stop thinking about it. So yeah, those are all of some of my favorite books that I've read so far in the year of 2022. I feel like my top 10 is pretty solid and it's going to take some truly great books to bump any of these books out of my top 10. But you know, we still have so many months left in this year of reading. You know, anything could happen. Like there are so many books that I'm so excited about still coming out before the end of the year that like this list could definitely change by the end of the year. I feel like I'm always discovering new favorites. I mean, I just finished reading Upgrade like a few days ago and it's already a new favorite of mine, you know? So anything could happen. I mean, gosh, I'm hoping I have at least a few more favorites before the end of the year. You know, that's the goal. Yeah, thank you so much for watching. Please let me know if you've read any of these books. Let me know what your thoughts are on them. And also let me know what are some of your favorite books of the year so far. If there are any books that you think I would really enjoy based on any of these favorite books of the year so far, then please let me know in the comments because I'm always looking for new things. And thank you all so much for watching and I will see you very soon with another video. Bye.